Hey, welcome back to Trumoto Resto. And uh, today we're gonna start uh, the real work on the uh, on the KTM RC8. This is gonna be uh, the Red Bull MotoGP replica. See it right there behind me. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll see how far we can get today. All right, so uh, here it is, 2009 KTM RC8. And uh, I th as I'll, I'll pop a picture and just a quick reminder of uh, kind of what the plan is for this bike. Uh, it is a track bike. It is a salvage title bike. So uh, there is no attempt here to, uh, to put this uh, back on the road. Uh, it's basically just going to be, it's, it's been a track bike before and, uh, I'll, uh, one of the, one of the upcoming videos, I'll kind of give a bit of a rundown on what's been done to this bike for the track. I know it has a Nakapovich tune on it. There's a few other things that have been done as well. And, uh, I'll give you a bit of a rundown because I did find some information uh, that the previous owner had posted on one of the uh, one of the forums about it. So, so the first uh, the first thing is if you I don't know if you've watched the the previous videos on this, you'll know that uh, it came with two sets of bodywork. And then they were pretty badly uh, thrashed and trashed. So I managed to get uh, all this, all the white bodywork that you see on it now is brand new fiberglass stuff, uh, all race bodywork. The tank is the original tank, but it still has uh, a wrap on it. So the wrap has to come off. So I'm gonna drain the tank, uh, peel the wrap off it. And then the other thing I have to do is I wanna attach and fix uh, all the bodywork uh, so everything is lined up the where where I want it to be. I've got some uh, Zeus fasteners for this tail section here, and uh, so it needs to be fastened down here, up at the top, and then the uh, the belly pan obviously has to be attached. And this is a single piece fairing up here. So there's some of these kits you can get where you know they're, they're kind of like the uh, the OEM kit or the OEM bodywork over there where it's kind of a there's a, a a line here where the upper fairing joins to the lower but this is all one piece and i bought that not because i preferred all one piece but because uh, it was cheaper um i just happened to find on ebay that kit uh and it was it was a really good price so as opposed to spending countless hours uh, time and money fixing the other stuff i thought i just buy some new stuff so get all the body work kind of uh, put together and uh, get it all bolted up and lined properly a lot of it still needs to be drilled so where the belly pan here meets uh, the the fairing uh, this has to be drilled for Zeus fasteners uh, I did some initial drilling here and up here so these need to be kind of made larger. I just put made them big enough to put zip ties in for the time being. But what I want to do is get everything so it attaches the way I want it to the to the bike, and then uh, I'll f I'll basically be able to uh, take the bodywork off and get it prepped for paint. Uh, I still the reason there's still paper on here is because uh, I was laying out the graphics. I think if you check back in the earlier video, I I papered the whole bike. And that's what allowed me to get the uh, the graphics created. I've left that one on only because I need to make a template uh, for the belly pan uh, paint job. So uh, I'll be doing that. The other thing that has to happen here 
is the, uh, if you can see here, the, uh, where the muffler is. It doesn't even line up with the hole. I think I've mentioned before. It's kind of a strange setup here. It has an aftermarket, like a cheap aftermarket muffler silencer in there. And then it's just basically got something, somebody has welded up an elbow, but it's kind of, it's about a hundred degree bend in there. So basically I'm going to lop that completely off and I'm going to attempt to attach a, a really nice silencer, which I'll show you as I get there. I think I've shown that in one of the earlier videos, but that has to be welded on. So I'm not going to actually tr probably do the finished welding on that, but I'll probably do enough welding just to tack it in place and then take it to somebody uh, like a buddy of mine that is more accomplished at welding than I am. So yes, yeah, so basically it's bodywork, uh, exhaust system, and then I need to do a little bit of work on the uh, on the front end. But I'm gonna I'm, the forks need to be rebuilt anyway because they're leaking, um, and I think I have head bearings for it. I have to check my my parts. So the whole front end is gonna come off. I'm gonna go through that, um, and then we'll see. See what else we we need to do. The uh, the other thing that has to get done on here is uh, these grips. So this has got a really 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 long grip on it, and what I figured out uh, why is on the stock bike there's another switch gear that sits in here. So this would actually be moved further down. But what somebody has done is they've taken an extra piece of of grip and lopped it on the end there. So. Um, that's all going to get sort of squared away and, and changed. So this will be kind of two even, evenly matched handlebars. I'm actually going to put in um, uh, like a MotoGP style switch gear in here. I may or may not uh, wire this uh, lap timer into that or not. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But it will go in there for two purposes. Uh, one, it'll allow me to align this grip better. It'll look better. Uh, and then the second reason is it will, it, it just looks cool. Um, it's a track bike, so uh, why not? It'd be nice if it was completely functional, but uh, it won't be. I may at some point um, try to get some different levers for this um, because, well, this is, um, this. these are kind of the kind of cheapy levers and, I, and you can't, you can't pull the, the, the clutch very far. I mean, ideally, you'd want to be able to... I mean, maybe you're not, you don't need to do much more than that, I guess, when you're shifting. But, um, yeah, it should it should actually move further than it does. But, anyway, I'm not too, too worried about that. Uh, what else can I tell you? I have the windshield for it. I've got... I think I have everything that I need to do the job. It'll get a thorough and complete cleaning. Um, I did a little bit of... Uh, I did my first wrap. So this is kind of a carbon fiber wrap. So I did that a little while ago. I never I never recorded it because well, I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. I may end up having to redo this one because if you can see here where I where I cut it with the knife, it, it kind of pulled back and it's kind of revealed the green paint underneath. So I'm not really thrilled about that, but. Aside from that, it, it turned out okay. So yeah, let's uh, let's get after it. I'll apologize for my uh, my wobbly camera work. I'm, I'm learning how to use this uh, Osmo gimbal thing, and it has got a little thumb uh, control joystick on it, and so I haven't completely figured out how to. Uh, how to work it yet. See, pan right, pan left, pan down, pan up. Often I get it wrong and I go the wrong way, so I gotta sort that out. All right, so what I'm starting to do here is is basically lay out the stencil. So this, I just kind of laid out, this is where I, I want orange paint. Uh, so I've kind of, I put orange tape there just to make sure that I was happy with the size and the shape. Um, so that's what I want. So then I basically double taped it with green over top just to give it some additional uh, strength. So when I peel it off like this, it'll all come off in one piece. 
And then what I can do is, uh, and then I can put tape on the back side of it. See, it's starting to peel away there, so I'll just peel it back from this side. Um, but if I put tape on the back side, then that will basically mean that I have a, a template for the left and a template for the right, because you can just basically flip it over uh, back on itself, and then I have a, a taping template for this side as well. So there we go. So this side right now is still sticky. So this would be the, uh, this will end up being the left side template. And then of course that'll be the right side template. Um, so now basically all I'm gonna do is put tape on this side so then it doesn't kind of get stuck to everything. So this is the, uh, the race seat that goes on the bike. Basically it's a, some sort of a poly pan on there. I don't know that it doesn't look like fiberglass, but anyway, it's some sort of a poly carbonate or something anyway, uh, with foam on it, and that basically mounts on here. Now the, the difficulty with you can't just kind of like put these on here like that and just mark where the bolts go and same with the front because if you kind of look at if you put those there and you drop these like those bolts at the back are kind of in the holes that I marked. And if you put these here, you can see they don't line up. So if you use that method, it's going to end in tears. So what I've done is I've made a template. So this is my template, which allows... Trust me that this... Uh, basically, I just taped everything on the bottom here of this pan and then make sure everything kind of lines up and then I took my template I put tape on the sticky side so it can't stick where I don't want it to stick and then basically you can just kind of lay this down right over where you want it to be that like that and that way you're not because if you just if you just use these where they touch on the pan because they're kind of all at an angle you're going to end up hacking the hole longer and longer and longer until you until it seats properly so hopefully this way i can uh, i can drill a smaller hole the size of these uh screws maybe a slightly larger and uh, i'm hoping that, that will allow that to drop in and seat without you know, unnecessarily elongating these holes so we'll see how that works so the more i look at uh, getting this seat to fit on this pan the more it seems to me that i might be able to get one set of these bolts through and that one hole but if I get those through, I'm not sure how, like this is where, this is certainly the final resting place. But given the angle of these bolts, you can see there where they hit. I'm just not sure how close that's going to be once the back one seats. So I guess what I'll do is I'll drill the holes first to get the back ones in. I'll drill the, I'll drill these ones as well. And uh, I'll see how close they are to dropping into place. All right, so I drilled the holes in the uh, the seat pan, and I uh, managed to get all of the uh, the bolts through. I did have to flex because of the angle of these ones. Obviously, uh, the screws kind of tend to want when you first touch down on the fiberglass, they kind of want to go in way up here. So you just kind of have to the the seats kind of contoured this way. You kind of have to flex it straight, pop the screws in, and then let it go, and uh, it fits fine. So I got the uh, upper part of the fairing uh, drilled and uh, the top part mounts up fine. So uh, what I'm trying to do now is get the, uh, 
I've got two dots marked there, but I'm not going to drill that yet because I'm not really very confident that I've got that lined up properly. So uh, these tabs are drilled here, and then there'll be a clip that goes on there for a Zeus fastener. Um, and then I'd kind of made a stencil here. You see, this is where the outline of the uh, of this fits. And then I transferred it over to there, but I'm not really thinking that's a great uh, way to do it. So. What I'm do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish fixing the belly pan, get that kind of all mounted up. I gotta make a bracket for the other side, um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pan off, and I'm gonna attach it down uh, off the bike with some clamps, and then I'm gonna drill from the back side here uh, into the. Uh, the, the upper fairing and the mid the mid section that way I know for sure the holes are gonna are gonna line up to where I want them to be um, on this side interestingly there were really there were no recesses for those holes so I just basically marked them where they were on the other side uh, this side on the back here there is no mounting tab somebody actually had this is a, a plastic uh, buckle for a, a nylon strap, which was bolted to the frame and then the fairing was bolted to this uh, originally. And that's just, that's not gonna work. So I've got a, a small piece of metal here that I'm gonna drill and then I'm gonna mount, I'm gonna uh, clean that up and paint it. And then that can become a, a mount to, uh, it'll basically get bolted on the back of here, back inside there, where that hole is there, it'll get bolted in there and then, uh, the other part will be kind of, so basically inside it'll be kind of bolted on something like that. All right, so here's the uh, the new bracket that I made for uh, for hanging this rear section of the uh, the belly pan. It'll mount up inside here, and then uh, bolt through there. All right, so this is the. Uh, upper fairing on the side and then into the belly pan. So what I've got here is when I kind of squeeze these together as best I can without putting in too much stress on everything and moving stuff around too, too much. Um, this is kind of the, the best fit I get. So my idea is I'm going to take off the belly pan and the upper, clamp them together off the bike and then drill from the back side because there's already holes in this now. So uh, that way everything should line up where I need it to line up. And on, similarly on the other side, same idea. By the time I kind of move that down there, somewhere in that neighborhood, should work. But yeah, it's hard to, uh, hard to get this stuff to sit exactly exactly right. Fiberglass is not really an exact science, so it seems. So on the uh, seat pan where it attaches to the tail, there's kind of recesses here all along for uh, fasteners, but to be honest, I don't, uh, I don't think that that makes a ton of sense. So firstly, um, I can't put on the kind of Zeus fasteners that I want to put on uh, with a hole drilled right there. It's just not going to work for me at all. So the ones I'm using are going to be these. These are the, the rivet on style. So I'm going to have these on the back side of the of the tail section at the top. Two at the top, two on each side for a total of six. These came from uh, curvygirl.com. Uh, these are then, so basically that's the, I guess the way they work. Uh, I, I, the, the type of fastener itself is a, you can't see them in here, I have to open it up. But anyway, the, you can kind of close up there. They're, they're black screw heads is what they are, right there. And for the tail section, I didn't want uh, D-rings like I have for the other spots. I wanted these flat head uh, screws and I wanted them in black so they don't kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Um, so there's less chance of these things becoming a, you know, problem when you're sitting on a bike. You don't want to be catching your leg on a D-ring. And I also don't want kind of, you know, I don't want it to be obvious that there's Zeus fasteners 
uh, on the seat section. There's other places where you know it kind of makes sense and they you know they they look a bit a bit better to have D-ring uh, Zeus fasteners, but on the seat section, um, I'm not so sure that's a great idea. Down here for sure, I wouldn't want that. Up at the top, yeah, you could probably get away with it without too much uh, difficulty. But yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, so I'm still mucking around with this thing. It's been uh, a little while, and I think part of my problem in getting everything aligned is this this bracket at the back, which holds the front of the belly pan, is kind of pushed that way a little bit. So I think I need to uh, detach the front of that again, and then try to pull that bracket this way, because if you take a look here, um, if I was to kind of draw a line between the chin of this belly pan to the front wheel. It would probably touch about here. If you look on the other side, it's uh, significantly different. It would actually be way out here. So I'm out probably uh, a good a good centimeter. So I think I'm going to have to uh, redo my my lines here once I get that front belly pan chin portion straightened out there because there's no point in in doing this unless you get it done you know reasonably well. Yes, it's a track bite. Yes, it's all fiberglass bodywork, and maybe if it was going to the track, I'd just stick a clamp on it, run a drill through it, and throw some screws in there, and it'd be done. But at this point, if I'm going to this kind of effort to produce something that's kind of a, a tribute bike, then uh, you got to take the time and get it reasonably close, right? You can't just hack these things together with duct tape and baler twine. Let's see if I can uh, straighten out this bracket here at the front. Doing its track life. This is not really a concerted effort on my part to get the tank stripped. Because in order to do that the way I wanted to do it, um, I'll have to take the tank off and drain the fuel. And this is one of those moments where you kind of just find yourself in the shop and there's nothing better than something to pick at for 20 minutes or so. And so this is me just picking and peeling just for something to do do this a couple of times and most of the tank will be done but you can tell uh, obviously the tank used to be black it's been painted black of course because that's not the original color I do have some pictures of this bike on the track from not the previous owner but uh, the person that probably put the track bike together some time ago as I said, I found pictures and information on the uh, KTM forum. So if you're watching this and you recognize your bike, drop a comment below and uh, stay tuned for the, uh, the transformation that's going to happen over the coming months. Yes, yeah, so this wrap's coming off really pretty easy, so... This has only been like 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, and pretty much the whole tank will be peeled. And then the rest of it, like where it's ever trapped and behind anything, is going to be uh, pretty straightforward to take off once I've pulled the tank. I've taken off these little uh, tank bumpers here, the covers that go on there. And uh, my plan for those is, <clears throat> I think I'm going to wrap them in the carbon fiber wrap like I did the, the fenders. That should look okay. And then if I don't like it, it's easy to just peel it off. But yeah, there we go. The majority of that wrap is off. As I said, the uh, the rest of this stuff will peel off real easy once the uh, once the tank's off. 
simple stuff. And uh, one of the nice things about the vinyl wrap stuff, it's uh, it's pretty quick to to peel it off. Even quicker probably if you warm it up with the with the heat gun. But I'm always a little bit uh, cautious about heat guns and plastic gas tanks and. It's simple enough just to peel it off without it, so that's what I did. So another interesting thing about the uh, the KTM RC8, uh, as I understand it, and eventually, obviously, I'll put this to the test, is you could take the tank off in, I'll call it the conventional way, like unbolt everything front and back, down here and whatnot. However, the tank will come off just fine, uh, but it may not go back on. Um, apparently, what you have to do to get the tank back on uh, is unbolt the rear subframe. And then uh, there's, a, there's a method to using ratchet straps and whatnot uh, to get the rear subframe back on. But apparently, it is exceptionally difficult to get one of these tanks back on if you don't unbolt the rear subframe. So uh, that's something where, obviously, I'll have to put that to the test at some point. Um, but I, I did notice that some of these screws here are not really well seated and this one kind of feels like it's been cross threaded. But uh, anyway, when we take these out, I'm gonna have to check the threads and maybe this one will have to be retapped. We shall see. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube with uh, folks who have struggled with putting the tanks back on an RC8. And apparently the answer is um, kind of unbolting from uh, the main part of the frame, putting the tank on, and then uh, using a ratchet strap to pull, I think, to pull the, the, the rear subframe back into alignment um, so you can bolt it together. Right, so there's the uh, seat unit, and I best basically drilled uh, six of the holes to take these. Uh, these are the black flathead rivets, not rivets, Zeus fasteners. Um, so that's what's going in there. That way, as I said, they'll uh, be less obvious that there's Zeus fasteners in the seat. I bought a pack of six. They're, these things are not cheap, but their curvy girl stuff is, is usually pretty good. Um, so basically I'm doing two outside ones at the top. That's going to get filled in. I'm not going to use that one. And then the two on the outside of the seat, each side of the seat will be the six I need. So this is the, uh, the tail section that that seat pen fits onto. Uh, and I'm going to drill the corresponding uh, holes. And then uh, what I'm also going to do, this is the, the receiving end of the, uh, of the Zeus fastener. So these are going to get basically riveted on to the uh, the back side of here. So I want the wide flange of the rivet on the finished edge of the fiberglass and I want the, uh, the flaring end, the part that pulls through, to, uh, to be in the back side uh, like that. So that's the way I'm going to put it in. So this uh, is my, it's just a manual rivet gun. I have an air powered one, but should be uh, completely unnecessary to use an air powered rivet gun uh, with such small rivets. So I've got the correct size collet in here. I think that's what you call these things uh, for the smaller rivets that I'm using. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes.
That's not good. What kind of a dummy am I? For some reason, this receiver doesn't line up with that very well. That one lines up. Why, why did they do that? The holes that I picked to drill are not actually lined up. Son of a gun. So here's the, uh, the strange thing. So this one, I had to re-drill this hole. This is what the hole was marked on the seat pan, but it didn't line up. All the other ones basically line up the way they should, including the one on this side. Like it, it lines up, you can see it kind of through there. And basically, once I pull it back a little bit, it will line up. So does this one. So for some reason, there was a, a recessed drilling hole there on this side, which was, you know, a good, five centimeters or whatever that is completely out of whack the other problem is uh, under here although this hole lines up okay i can't get the seat to to get close enough to the uh to the tail section because inside here is a support and what you actually see here is so this support which is what sits on the frame of the bike uh, which allows your weight when you sit on the seat to not crush everything. Um, it's got a very thick layer of resin between this and the top of the seat pan. And this, this layer of resin is actually interfering with, uh, with, with the seat here. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, trim that a little bit so that it sits down properly. Um, I don't really want to cut off any of this because I, then I start to you know, damage the integrity of the fiberglass tail section, but I can safely remove some of this material um, without, without causing any issue in, in support or whatever. So. so I'll have to mark it and then uh, I'll just grind it away. All right, so I've got everything uh, attached here and um, see they're all riveted in what i haven't yet done is kind of gone back which i'm about to do and see if the, the tail unit will actually fit um one thing i will say is on the insides of, of, of fiberglass panels um you know perfection is not the name of the game on the inside right so oftentimes like with this one here um the stock rivets they provided with the kit wouldn't reach um because of the the contour on the inside and i had to use longer ones but i also had to do some grinding in order to get to that to uh, get that clip to sit relatively flat all right so uh took this outside and i ground off a significant portion of this plate it's on the bottom you can see where the kind of the shiny resin is that's how far it came over so i took that amount off each side so then my hope is that that will mean that this will sit much more evenly on here. So I'm going to pop the, uh, those black Zeus screws into the, uh, the seat pan there. And then we'll see how, uh, see how difficult it is to get this thing uh, buttoned down. Because as you can tell from looking at the back here, when it sits flat there, up quite a ways at the back and again probably you know this was not an expensive fiberglass kit and uh, I don't know maybe uh, as these things come out of the mold there's a uh, you know there's an opportunity for them to change shape a little bit or sometimes it's the quality of the molding that's done some of them are obviously better quality than others and so when you get a cheaper one like I bought and you don't get to complain that much. You just got to deal with it. All right, so I'm gonna get this last one in. There we go. There she is. She's all buttoned up. See how it fits there. 
So generally speaking, I would say that that is not a bad, that's not a bad fit. So the filling that I'll have to do on this now, um, obviously I've got to fill that one there, which was about a mile away from where, where the mark said, I had one of these dimples in it here. See the drill mark there? So there was one of those right there. So I don't know why that was. Anyway, so any of the remaining dimples are gonna get filled. So yeah, once I trim that off inside, where I marked it there with the sharp. Once that gets trimmed, this this piece at the front will, uh, will sit down much better. So but yeah, there we go. That is the tail piece pretty much done. All right, so I've got uh, everything fastened on there. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is i got to put a couple of screws in here. Uh, I did get everything lined up earlier, but uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then what it, what it's allowed me to do now is to see that this is a little tight on this edge, so I can trim that a little bit where I've got the black Sharpie here, just to make it easier to fit the seat pan. And then everything else is, uh, isn't too bad by the time I get these screws mounted in here. She should be, uh, should be good to go. So there we go, the uh, screws are in the back here. So this thing is now very, very well mounted, sturdy. That's, uh, that's good. It was important to get all of this mounted um, and make sure that it was solid and it fits properly um, before you get into the, you know, I get into the painting and prepping phase because as soon as you add paint, um, once one the tolerances get a little tighter, and then secondly, uh, you don't want to be monkeying with this stuff when it's all kind of nicely finished. So it's uh, you know it's got to be done in a way that you know it fits properly before you start all of that uh, painting process, and then when the refitting comes, when you put it back on the bike, um, you know you know it actually fits. You're not having to trim and sand and then repaint stuff or you know that's uh, that's just not the way you want to be doing it so okay so there's the uh, the hole that i uh had drilled that he had to be moved to there um and i've just used my plastics repair kit so uh, lots of videos on my channel about using this stuff um exceptionally good for abs plastic however you can also use it for fiberglass so just some foil tape on the back i did grind um an area a little bit bigger than the hole uh through the gel coat, same on the back, just so we get good uh, kind of layered adhesion. Uh, so it's not just filling the hole, it's actually gonna be filled around the hole uh, on the back side as well. So here uh, I've got the, the upper fairing in the pan off the bike. And uh, the idea here is I'm gonna try to get this upper section aligned a little closer with this black Sharpie line that I put on the belly pan on both sides, this one was pretty close. And then I'll go from the inside and see if I can mark the holes for drilling. So kind of like going in here. I can find out the spot there so you can see in the video there. Yeah, so basically put the, uh, put the Sharpie in the hole here. Hopefully that marks it. So here's the uh, stencil, the pattern for uh, the rear uh, lower belly pan. <clears throat> um, this is the part that will kind of be that aqua greeny bluey color for the uh, the Motorex uh, branding. And then the rest of the pan will be uh, orange. So gloss on the pan, The this part of the fairing, which I still have to tape off and get the, make the stencil for that, will also have an orange section to it. And then uh, the, that will be gloss. Gloss on the very top of the tank up here in orange. And then everything else will be uh, flat, dark blue, non-gloss clear coat. So there's the uh, right side template. So that'll basically, that'll go on here, right around that exhaust hole, right about there. And then uh, that'll allow me to uh, make sure I get accurate paint lines 
And then uh, I'll probably just temporarily tape this on here. Um, once I get everything kind of attached again, you see I've got the uh, the holes drilled here where I, I you know, where they seem to line up okay. Um, so once I've got everything attached and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna tape that template on because I have to have a corresponding parallel line template on here because this part of the lower fairing uh, has to be orange as well. Uh, and I want the same angle. Um, I don't want kind of, you know, one at a shallow angle, one at a steep angle. They both gotta be parallel to each other. So I've, uh, I think I've got all of the, the fasteners and the bodywork all fitting together. I did get the, uh, the D-ring Zeus fasteners to fit through those holes there. Fastened everything together. Um, so that's good. That's going to think about do it for this video today. Um, next thing that I'm going to do is I'll probably drop the belly pan again. And then I'm going to cut off uh, the, uh, the tip of that exhaust pipe. So this thing in here has to go. And then... Uh, what I have to do is to attach a new exhaust tip to it. And so my plan for that is, is basically this guy. I'll show you. So here we go. That is going to go on it. It's this big honking tailpipe. And then there's this 45 degree pipe here. So the plan is kind of to attach that to the existing muffler and then attach that to this. So it looks something like that. Like that. I think I can get approximately the angle that I want to come out of. So that'll basically be coming out of here. Obviously, it'll sit much further back in there. I don't, I don't want very much of this sticking out. Um, actually, it's not going to look like that. That would look poor. Um, so, yeah, I want to get this further back in. I just can't show you because the other piece of the pipe is in the way, right? I'm hitting it there, but you get the idea. That's going to sit coming out of there somewhere uh, further back. If, if I can get the angle of the the tip of the pipe to kind of follow the, or parallel the body line of the pan, something like that, that would be perfect. And uh, so what I have to figure out is I might make a jig um, because I don't want to, what I don't want to be doing is putting the pan on and off, on and off, on and off, because it's just a huge pain in the backside. So if I make uh, a jig of some sort to hold this where I want it. I'm going to figure out where it needs to go so it will come out of this hole properly and then uh, I can use that to hold it in place uh, while I tack weld everything on there. So I haven't really figured all of that out yet as to what I'm going to do but I have to come up with some way of doing it. Um, Otherwise, it's just going to be a huge pain in the backside uh, putting this pan uh, on and off every time. So anyway, that'll be the next video. I'll be taking that on. And then uh, after that, the bodywork all has to get prepped for paint. And although there's not really much in the way of repair, this when this thing got shipped, the tip of this was broken off. So I'll have to fabricate a new tip on that. And then there's lots of molding lines where these when these fiberglass uh, parts come out of the mold. You can kind of feel there's lots of kind of rough pointed edges and seams where the, the molds are, or the halves and pieces of the molds come together like here. So I want to clean all that stuff up before I paint it. So I'll be doing all of that. And then once the bodywork is off, um, the tank is off and that'll get prepped, of course. Uh, then the front forks have to come off, uh, new fork seals have to go in. I'll go through everything just to make sure everything is good. But uh, yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.